Hi everyone, welcome back to Let's Play Chaos Head. Uh, you know what? I I said I was going to continue on from, uh, you know, what I did last time. Where he said that was the worst, but I'll continue on from that was sweet. I also lost the recording because it was really shitty. So let's continue on from that was sweet. Which was the good one, mind you. I was sitting in front of a PC monitor. I poured some coke in my mouth to suppress my exhilaration and stretched widely in my reclining chair. It was a very real seeming flight of fancy, if I do say so myself. Plus, a high school girl with a mysterious air to her appeared in it. I thought about giving her a name and cultivating her in my imagination. I play around like this a lot. Sometimes I cast pre-existing characters such as Saraton. Hmm. But I got the sense that this girl was different was a different type from Seraton. Whatever the case, what's great about it is I I can do whatever the hell I want in my head, whether it's sitting in the second or third dimensions, and all that occurs in my delusions goes according to my godly will. <laughs> Next time I'll put in a little error too. <laughs> I mutter without thinking, as if I were back in my base, when I remembered that I was in the net cafe, I covered my mouth. I quietly studied my surroundings. Well, it's not like anyone was listening. As I hated going out, that cafe was my sole amusement spot. It was located at the edge of CBR's shopping district, and as such, many of its customers were delinquent 3D girls or blurry salarymen. But all the rooms were meant for individual use, so it wasn't a problem. By the way, the room I was in, I was currently in, room 37, had been reserved for my use, and it was placed in the furthest back of the store. It was inconvenient to get ju juice reveal. It was in I cannot talk. It was inconvenient for going to get juice refills, but because not many people went in the nearby seats, it was relatively quiet. I went out of my way to come here once or w twice a week on the back of my, on, uh, on my way back from school in order to log on to NC with a different ID. In other words, it was like taking a break. Nightheart was a little too well known. I didn't mind that, but having to be a paragon of heroic behavior day after day was pretty stressful. The one I use over here is a female character na ca called Lizelot. However, Lizelot's battle history was pretty terrible. I only used her to make those around her look better in comparison. Today, too, I released my stress by playing for about three laid-back hours. Afterward, I chatted with my guild friends for a while, getting worked up over stupid and or arrow topics. It was close to 9 p.m. when I left the store. According around this time of night, there tends to be an especially large number of juvie types in the shopping district. I got the urge to vomit when I saw them sitting here and there along the road like it belonged to them, or grinning crudely while eating fast food hamburgers. If I made the mistake of meeting their eyes, those imbeciles would soon react by attacking me. What savages. People like that aren't human beings. They're just males and females. They don't have a single fragment of so social intelligence. Guys like that should go die. Seriously. They should go off and die. Is what I kept thinking, but when you got down to it, it was pointless to respond to them. So I planned to hastily remove myself from the shopping district. It took me a little out of my way, but after leaving Ad Cafe, it was my routine to stop by either the Mangadarake or Animate stores. Deciding I would go to Animate today, I headed for the subway sudden entrance. When you come this way, the number of del delinquents sharply decreases. The center of the district was seriously chaotic. Just walking there almost made it hard to breathe. If it were possible, I wouldn't want to take a single step closer. I wanted it all to get destroyed, leaving only behind my ad cafe and manga direct. Now then, I'll throttle to, my, to the comics and doujinshi to, uh, today as well. Oh, come to think of it, pre-orders for the fifth Buracu DVD should be opening soon, shouldn't they? Before I knew it, I was standing on a narrow street in the Maruyama area that I always used to get back to. Are you serious? Look at this fucker. Fuck off, gal. I 
All right. All right, that guy's gone. That's just typical. I don't go off as of X-Fire one time, and that guy has to message me. Seriously, before I knew it, I was standing on a narrow street in the Mariyama area that I always used to get back from my, to my base from Animate. I blinked multiple times. I took a peek inside of my bag. Several textbooks and a gaming-enabled cell phone were the only things inside. I hadn't bought anything at Anime today, despite the fact that I always buy something there without fail. I let it aside and began walking again. From here it would take less than 15 minutes to get back to my base. Merely moving a little ways from the station was enough to make the dazzling lights and neon vanish, and the presences of other people grow scarce. If I had to put it one way or another, it wasn't very active. Most I saw a middle-aged couple on their way to a hotel district, and once in a while a Saturday man returning to his nearby home. I had a hard time thinking that it was the same Shibuya as the shopping district, which, over, which overflowed with those delinquents. It seemed that the clouds had come out now, now that it was night, and the moon was hidden from view, making the road darker than usual. Is that so? Matata. That's some German here. The same thing again. Familiar scenery. A filthy street. Yet I was attacked by the peculiar sensation that I had gotten lost in a different world altogether. So this time we're really here. This is not an illusion. Although the scenery itself hadn't changed, it was a setting foot here in this place for the first time. Because you are! Also the rotten stench of raw garbage was floating in the air. The seeping moisture that clung to my skin was enough to make me mistakenly think it was raining. The air seemed to pace itself on me. Yeah. When was again referring to? When had I pre previously experienced Jamais Vu? Damn it, reality and my delusions were getting mixed together. Now my thoughts were starting to resemble the stereotypical analysis offered by some sketchy expert on a TV radio variety show, weren't they? Anyway, I was certainly experiencing jamais vu at this very moment. And that wasn't all. The prickling along the muscles of my neck, the sensation that someone looking down from on me from the heavens. It wasn't a hallucin it wasn't a hallucin Alright. What's up, Flocker? You gonna learn how to talk? It wasn't a hallucination. No matter how my, how I sped up my pace, the gaze followed me wherever I went. Right now, someone was definitely watching me. The presence of the gaze was just that strong. I wanted to turn around, but in the end I didn't. This was a game I challenged myself with every once in a while. When I heard the small noise, even if I had the feeling that someone was watching me, I played it the it'll take more than that to make me turn around game. If I turned around, I would lose. The visions that usually appeared in my head when I sensed the gaze were ghosts and hor horrifying faces. Monsters, something like that. Well, whatever the case, in these past 17 years, there wasn't a single instance of me turning around and actually finding something there. With that limited guarantee of safely attached to it, I came to enjoy this single-player mental game. I would listen carefully to the wind, raise one eyebrow, and make a dubious... <laughs> <laughs> and make a Dubois face. <laughs> make a dubious face. <laughs> Try saying manga esque lines. But because the reason I didn't turn around wasn't because I was scared or anything. I had meant to make an argument show out of my own nonchalance. But before I realized it, my feet had stopped. Sensing a faint alteration in the strained air, I cowered. At some point, my face had become soaked with sweat and my knees seemed to start knocking. Unable to bear it any longer, I turned around. I lost the game, but there was no end behind me. After all, there weren't even cars passing. What was the sense of displacement? <laughs> the ringing in my ear stopped. Yes, we'd been hearing some ringing. I noticed the sound only when it stopped. Up until then, I had been hearing a sound like my ears ringing. 
Up until then, I had completely failed to recognize the fact that they were ringing. And now I heard nothing. A silence so sudden it seemed like a lie, especially the smack in the middle of a city. Especially smack in the middle of a city. I had the feeling I should be able to hear any sounds out there with incredibly incredible clarity. I shut my eyes tight and focused on my hearing. But of course, I heard nothing. Strange. I've seen that face before. I hear you knocking on my door. <laughs> this was really strange. Normally I would surely hear things like trains running in the distance and car horns beeping. Why? Had something gotten wrong with my ears? I wanted to shout out loud. I felt like I'd go crazy if I didn't. But I couldn't do it. It was too quiet, and the thought that breaking the silence might bring about something terrible made me hesitate. <laughs> A single sound unexpectedly entered my soundless world. When I glanced over at the end of the dirty road lay fallen numerous shiny somethings. They were strewn around about to cover the asphalt. Jujiko? The instant I recognized them as such, my feet, which before had refused to, to so much as twist, twitch, spontaneously stepped forward. Upon picking up one of the scattered crosses, I found that it was made out of metal, and its lengthy point sharpened into something like a needle. A stake? Or a nail? Because it shaped strangely, I had uh, mistaken it for a cross. I felt buoyant as I gripped the stake in my hand. I could hear it. The softly resounding sound of something or other. A chilly sound. One that made the muscles of my back freeze up. It came to me at intervals. My feet wouldn't stop. I, cont I continued walking as though my conscience was were getting sucked in that sound's direction. Was I being driven by morbid, morbid curiosity? Or was it because I wanted someone to save me? Because I wanted to be lifted out of that soundless world? This was turning on, out almost like a German folktale. How did it go? That's right, the Pied Piper of Hamelin. Over 100 children were lured away by the sound of his pipe. The sound didn't stop. The unpleasant sound of something being hammered grew closer and closer as I continued forward. The sound was coming from the depths of a narrow alleyway to my left. If I turned the corner, I would discover its source. Why didn't I think of drawing back? The idea didn't even, occur, the idea didn't even occur to me. It was as though I, I was being made to move by something outside me. So I turned the corner, and what leaped into my eyes was... Floating up out of the, the darkness, a brilliant red. <laughs> well, isn't that great? My first reaction was, I think, I've seen this object off somewhere before, and it doesn't look real. Some of the screws holding together my heart may have gotten blasted away. My senses may have gone numb. If I were my usual self, terror would have made, out, made me let out a pathetic scream, collapse, and urinate on the spot. An object died like a hedgehog or a bunch of flower arranging needles. A myriad stakes kept it stuck to the wall. As I gazed mindlessly at it, I realized there was a huge quantity of red blood flowing from the mountain of stakes. The brilliant red I had initially seen was a puddle of blood, lit by the weakened light of the street lamps that just barely reached it. That red led off a slick luster. Moreover, a bunch of shiny flesh-like lumps that I couldn't identify were lying around. I started to suck in my breath, but at some point my throat had dried up and not a single drop of saliva ran down it. I had realized that the thing penned by stakes was a human corpse. It was done too immorally, too mercilessly, too terribly. And the one who had done it, the one who had driven this many stakes into the concrete, was a single girl. If I were to say how I knew that, was because a, was be, because a girl gripping a bundle of stakes would 
scarlet painted hands was at this very moment standing still in front of the object door. Since her back was facing me, I couldn't tell what kind of expression she was making, but the uniform she wore was from Sume. The rotten garbage-like smell I had sensed earlier reached my nose more and more vividly, vividly making nausea come at me at intervals. Unable to tol tolerate it, I covered my mouth and struggled to keep my stomach acid from bursting out. At that point, I finally remembered the origin of my déjà vu, the feeling I had seen this somewhere before. I raised my voice without meaning to, without realizing that such an action was fatal. At the sound of her vo of my voice, her blood dyed shoulders shivered, and she slowly turned to face me. Her gaze pierced through me, such dark eyes. She had killed somebody. She looked at me, widening her eyes as though shocked, and then shifted to a tearful smile and squeezed her voice out. She murmured, Glad? What was there to be glad about? More importantly, in a situation like this, why would she see me and smile? Her meaning was unclear, it was so unclear that something cold ran down my spine, and I hastily averted my eyes. I reflexively thought I don't want to get caught up in anything weird. I couldn't talk to real girls while looking them in the eye, and even setting that aside, she was unmistakably a murder. The police would come soon, and I was hungry. Right, that's why I should go home. I should leave this. I should leave right this second. If not, I'll go insane. <laughs> she abruptly called my name, even though it was the first time we'd met. I hadn't given her my name. As she watched me, her lips twisted in a horrifically fearless smile, like those of a demon. I screamed. While screaming, I ran blindly, and I went on yelling even as it became hard to breathe, and whatever happened, I desperately kept running. I turned just once to look behind me, but she hadn't come chasing after me. I was running out of air. I could hear my own painful, ragged breathing. I was sitting in front of my PC monitor. My whole body was drenched in sweat, and I had been soaked through to my clothes. What happened just now? Had I imagined it? I was about to lose control of my nausea. To suppress it, I took some coke out of the fridge and poured it into my mouth. It was a very, very real-seeming delusion, if I do say so myself, but way too good. I still couldn't catch my breath. Would a delusion leave me without enough air? Like hell it would. Something about my right hand fell out of its place. I was gripping my fist so tightly that my fingers turned white. I had been unaware I had been utterly unaware I was doing it. My heart pounding, I relaxed my mus muscles and slowly opened my hand. <laughs> a single stake rested on the palm of my hand. Frightened, I flung it at the wall. The steak from before. I had definitely picked up one of the steaks strewn across the street. But why was it here? Hadn't, be hadn't that been a hallucination? I don't understand. I don't understand. I don't understand. That's impossible. It's impossible. That's impossible. Hugging my head, I stum stumbled aimlessly around my room. For starters, I had to find out whether the ghastly scene I'd witnessed was just a little while ago had been reality or the product of my delusions. Or so I thought. But I stepped on a CD case that had fallen onto the floor, and my foot slipped. I reached out, seeking something to grab onto so as to keep myself from falling. What I grasped was the edge of the shelf where my wires were lined up. Shit! I thought, but it was already too late. Unable to support myself, I collapsed to the floor. Above me, my pretty arranged figures came pouring down in huge numbers. Ah, oh, god damn it, this was as bad as it got. Everything was at its absolute worst. I stood up, groaning, and checked to, where to see whether my figures were safe. 
新海馬橋のイグニスさんの剣が It had broken neatly in half, despite the fact that I bought this online auction at a premium price. Uzaken na, uzaken na yo! I tried, to, I tried to sort that piece of the sword back together, but even if I could line up the broken parts, it would be impossible to completely restore it. With this, it had lost all its value. <laughs> Pissed off, I kicked at my chair. My eyes welled with tears. Why did this kind of thing happen to me? <sighs> When did I ever do anything wrong? Plopping heartbrokenly in place, I spent some of the time looking at my swordless ignis and getting depressed. <laughs> When the storm of rage and confusion finished passing through me, her face and the tableau of the object door finally rose up at the back of my brain. The fact that I still had the stake meant it had been reality, not my imagination. I didn't want to, but I had no choice to acknowledge it. Tomorrow, no doubt, the mass media would appear would be in an uproar. uproar. I definitely didn't want to get wrapped up in something like this. Make no mistake, I'd be ruined if I got involved with someone like her. No, rather with that demon. I was uh, I was already well on the way to self-destruction to begin with, because I'd brought the helm a deadly weapon, a precious piece piece of evidence. It wouldn't be odd for people to suspect me of being the perpetrator. On top of it all, on top of it all. Demon has seen my face! I couldn't run away from this whole affair. Next time, the demon will come after me. For now, I should, put, I should put my thoughts in order. For my own sake, for the sake of surviving. I had to get organized. If not, there was no way she would duplicate a killing method so faithfully. That girl must have begun using composite photos to meticulously simulate the scene of the crime and then onto the crime itself, although she'd probably call it her work of art. That's what it means to be a psycho. She must have tried to carry everything out to perfection. <laughs> Uh, what should I do? That demon will come to kill me soon. I knew it. And if she knew my name and email, there was a strong chance she'd also find out my address. Seated in my chair, I hugged my knees and buried my face in them. That abnormal killing method I'd seen yesterday. When I thought of that, I'd be. When I thought that I'd be, I might be killed in the same way, I couldn't keep cool in the slightest. Seraton lay in front of my monitor and smiled at me. Mozo! Anyways, we're gonna save on this awesome BGM. I'll see you guys next time. I hope you enjoyed that. There's more to come. <laughs> Keep on watching.